Go with me to the book of Matthew chapter 10. Ministry realities. I'll say again. Ministry realities. This is going to be so good. By the time you leave this place, you'll, be, you'll have been incredibly blessed. How many know you lose when you walk in assumptions? Anybody here? If you walk in assumption, you lose. Big time. That's why David said, Father, deliver me from all presumptuous sins. Sins of assumption. Number two, you lose when you walk in ignorance. My people perish for lack of knowledge. And that's why the Bible says the heart of the wise seeks knowledge. That's the word of God. Number one, you lose big time any time you walk in assumption. Number two, you lose when you walk in ignorance. Listen to this. Listen to this. Number three. This is so important. People lose when they walk in complacency. When you are passive. In other words, when you are not serious. When you, don't, when you are not purposed. That's where people lose. And that's why today I want to talk about ministry realities. And like I said, I wish somebody taught me this as I was beginning ministry or before I began ministry. This is because this is so vital. This is the stuff that you don't hear taught in many places. But it is the reality. It is the reality. Is anybody hearing me? Number one, you as an individual, you as a believer, you have a responsibility of receiving from God. Let's talk about realities now. On your side, you are to receive from God. This is what we are teaching many people many times. How to receive healing, how to prosper, how to receive more faith, how to receive this and the other. This one we are teaching, this is, this is where we major on, how you can receive from God. But watch this. You as a believer, you have, I have a responsibility to give to God. That is, we minister to God. This is where praise comes in. This is where worship comes in. And listen to this. The most important thing you can give to God is your obedience. And obedience comes from commitment. It's your loyalty to God. You receive from him. Listen to this. This is what God will do for you. It is what you do for God. 
reality number one. Please listen to this. Teaching may not on receiving from God. About we our responsibility towards God. I mean, this one is lacking, if I may say that. I still remember in the early days of revival, it, it, all that we were being taught is how to give to God. Our, 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 our praise and our worship missions. How we are to be used of God. I mean, that was, that was great. Let me say that. Let me say what I said to you. Repetition is the law of learning. When we come to talk about ministry realities, we begin by seeing where are we losing and how, where are we gaining. And we saw where we are losing. Number two, when we talk about ministry realities, we come to see where we receive from God and where we give unto God. But listen to this. Listen to this. Where I want to dwell on today is where you yourself give to the people and where they give you. That's where I want us to dwell. Because, listen to this, Mark chapter 16, but from verse 15, go into all the world, preach the gospel to all creation. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they will shall cast out devils. How many know? That's ministering to the people. Hello? They will heal the sick. They will lay hands on the sick. The sick will come. That involves you ministering to the people. That's so important. And it is very, very important, like, you know, apostles said, that now, you know, what we are to do for the Lord, we do it with all our hearts. What we, when we come to ministry to the people, let's go out there. Let's plant churches. Let's grow churches. Let's help the leaders come up. Let's train leaders. Let's do what we can do to minister to the people. But I have news for you. That we prepare people to do. Now, follow this. We are very good when it comes to getting from God. But not very much how to give to God. Although we teach it. We are very good when it comes now. We want you to do. This is how you can connect with God. But there is something, please, that I want to talk about today that is really, really taught. Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 10. Very important scripture. Very, very important scripture. Give me Matthew 10. Listen to this. And he called his 12 disciples and he gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. That is ministry to the people. Tell your neighbor, ministry to the people. Write, follow this. I'm going to go through Matthew 10. I want you to write as I go through it. Verse 1 ministry to the people. Verse 2. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First it was Simon, Peter, and his brother Andrew. 
James, son of Zebedee, and the, his brother, John, now, and write your name there. Verse 2, write your name there. These are the people that God appointed. Uh, Peter, John, James, and the others. Can you write your name in verse 2? Verse 3, please. Listen to this. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and the Deus. Verse 4, please. Simon the Zerite, Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. Now, verse 5. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Verse, go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. Go on. As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Go on now. Heal the sick. Now, by the way, verse 7, ministry to the people. Verse 8, ministry to the people. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Cleanse those who have leprosy. Drive out demons. Freely you have received. Freely give. Ministry to the people. Verse 9. Do not take along any gold or silver or copper in your belts. Go on now. Take no bag for the journey or extra tunic or sandals or a staff for the worker is worthy his keep. Go on. What a, now, hold on. Listen to this. Are you ready? Are you ready? Verse 9. Will you write there? He will provide. He will provide. And as you write that he will provide, this is what I want you to know. He provides in many ways. During this time, he told them, don't carry anything. But by the way, by the time you come to Luke chapter 22, verse 36, Jesus is going to tell them, now I want you to carry your pass. I want you to carry your sword. I want you to carry this. In other words, he will provide in many ways. Not one way. Is anybody hearing me? He has many ways of providing. Now, go on now. Let's go. Whatever town or, or village you enter, search for some worthy person there and stay at his house until you leave. As you enter the home, Give it your greeting. If the home is deserving, let your peace rest on it. If not, let your peace return to you. Now listen to this. So far, we have seen ministry to the people. By the time you come to verse 11, are you ready for this? Write this down. Not everyone will receive you. I wish somebody told me that. We are now coming to see where he, Jesus is telling them, I want you to go to minister to the people. But I also expect Please listen that you are very realistic as you minister the gospel. Not everybody will receive you. I wish somebody told me that. I expected because I'm preaching the good news, everybody will say hallelujah. Everybody will receive me. And when people did not receive me the way I expected them, them to receive me, I was very hurt. I don't know about you. 
I was very hurt. Because I was not prepared for it. The reason why Jesus was preparing his disciples is because he wanted them to be very realistic in their ministries. Not to have assumptions. And not to over expect. Not to assume. He said, when you go to that village, look for the person who is worthy. In other words, somebody that is receptive. If they are receptive, stay there. My grace will be there. My goodness will be there. But if they are not receptive, don't leave your peace there. Go with your peace. Many times where we are not received, we get agitated, we get angry, we lose our cool, we leave our peace there and go with the frustrations because we are not prepared. Don't leave your peace there and go out with anger, with frustrations. Carry your peace with you. Your peace will enable you to go and minister to the next person. I told you by the time you leave this place, you will be different. We are cutting a lot of woods because we are leaving our peace in the wrong place. Look at your neighbor. Ask them, where did you leave your peace? Can you imagine? You lost your, you left your peace with somebody who was not deserving your grace. They did not deserve your anointing. They did not deserve what you carry. Am I talking to someone? Am I talking to someone? Hear me. You have a responsibility to the people. The people have a responsibility to you. But please, if you go to that village and they are, you know, they are not receptive, don't kill yourself. One of the things that is making us, please listen to this, give up very easily in ministry is because we have left our peace with the people who did not deserve our grace. And we get very frustrated. Jesus said, I want you to be real. Not everybody will receive you. Not everybody will receive you. And I don't want you to leave your peace with them because you will not be able to minister to the next person. Just carry your peace with you. I wish somebody told me this. I wish with all my heart that somebody told me this. A 
I wish somebody had told me that when I came, uh, uh, you know, by, by the time I would come to Kiambu, there are people who would tell me, if you go to the east, we go to the west because you teach heresies. I'm talking about myself. I wish somebody told me that. I would not have carried the frustration for a day. I would have carried my peace and moved on. Is anybody hearing me? I would have carried my peace and continued to preach the gospel to other people who would be worthy the grace I carry. But some of you, I'm talking to someone in this house, right now, you have come on one person who is not worthy of your grace. Go on now. Ministry realities. If they are not, the Bible says, if anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake the dust off your feet when you leave that home or town. Let me help you. What does that mean? Don't carry the dust of rejection from their house. Some of you are carrying a lot of dust. Let's talk about realities. Don't carry that dust of insult. Don't carry it. The greatest testimony in my life about ministry that I ever had, I had it in a place you call Kyuso in Mwingi. Mwingi North. Who did you? And I will never forget that testimony. Two guys from the Raka in Meru. They went to the founder, the founding bishop, founding missionary of East African Pentecostal churches. They said, missionary Olson, we have prayed. That was around 70. We have prayed, we have sought God. And he has told us, that we need to take the gospel from the Raqqa on this side of Meru and then we cross to the Raqqa of Mwingi on the other side of Kitui. We need to cross Tana River with the gospel. These were two young men full of fire. They went, you know, and Walter also looked at them, the founding missionary. And he told them, I want you to give me just a bit of time. I'll call you. I'll call you. Just go, go out there. Let me finish what I'm doing, and I'm going to call you. So they left the office, went out, started talking to one another, and they started saying, by the way, did we make a mistake? Did we do bad to go to him? But later, they were called into the office. I'll never forget this in my life. They were called into the office, and uh, the missionary looked at them and told them, the voice you heard is the voice of God. But I want you to listen to this. When you cross Tana River to go on this side, that, that time it was Kitui. 
Listen to this. Still Kitui County. But it is in Mwing all the way on the other side. When you cross this side, number one, you will be hungry. People will not give you food there. After all, you don't belong to their tribe. They don't give you food. Don't think that you are going there and everybody will welcome you. No. So I'll tell you something. If you leave that place, you quit because you are hungry. You have already given the devil a weapon. He knows. Anywhere you go, all he has to do is to deny you food and that's it. He will come here and even burn your granaries so that you go hungry and quit the ministry. He was giving this man ministry realities. And he told them, if they don't receive you here, and they deny you food here, don't quit ministry because these people have you don't, you cannot afford to quit ministry. You cannot afford to be offended because this is not the only place, this is not the only individual that you are called for. You are called to every, I mean, for, to, for everybody, some will receive, some will not receive. Look at, look at your life. Some of us are carrying a lot of dust. Dust of rejection. Dust of insult. No, hold on. Go to verse 13 and 14 of that scripture. Look at this. 13 and 14. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust off your feet when you leave that home or town. Verse 14, 15. Listen to this. I tell you the truth. It will be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. Leave God to judge them. Don't carry the dust of anger, of frustration, of rejection, of judgment. Don't carry it. Go free. Leave them with the God and go on. Leave them with the God and go on. You are just to pray for them, you go on. But don't carry that wound. Don't carry that offense. Don't carry, please, don't carry the dust of offense. It will kill your ministry. I'll say that again. It will kill your ministry. Right now, there are so many ministries that are on spiritual oxygen. I see you because of that. They are carrying the dust of rejection, the dust of mockery, the dust of offense. And their ministry right now are in the ICU. Can you shake off that dust to them? Shake that dust. You cannot go far, please. Listen. Dust stops you from breathing. Jesus was very precise with his words. He knew 
the dust you carry will keep you from breathing spiritual oxygen. I'm talking to pastors here. Shake off that dust. And that dust is that person who left your church. That person who left you when you most, I mean when you needed him most. When you needed her most. Scandalized you and left. Shake off that dust. Listen to this. Go on, go on now. The Bible says in verse 16, I'm sending you like sheep among wolves, therefore be ye as rid as snakes and as innocent as doves. Ha hello. Listen to this. Go on to uh, Ezekiel. I'm sending you to, pe you know, to people that are like thorns and the prayers. Will you look at your neighbor and tell him, if you are going to go on in ministry, you must know that people are people. Tabadari. See Maraika. Look at your neighbor. Tell you, at, at all, see Maraika, Ninajua. But we assume everybody, everybody, everybody dropped from heaven this morning. Look at your neighbor. Mwambiyazi, hata mimi nilitoka kwangu nyumbani. Siku toka biguni. I came from my house. That's why I love the Bible. The Bible, said, David said, God, you know we are dust. You know that. If you don't listen, unless you are realistic enough, you will not go along in the ministry. Goja ni kuambia ile 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 ambao itakusaidia leo. He told them, I am sending you like sheep among wolves. That means their people are ready to tear you up, to chew you alive. Especially when you start succeeding. Listen to this. You've got to be prepared to move on and you refuse to be held captive because of the way people treat you. There are so many people out there who are waiting for your grace. They are waiting for the anointing upon your life. They are hungry. For the word that you have, they are just eager to receive you. But the problem is, you are wasting a lot of time among wolves. I came to tell someone, move on. I came to tell someone, you cannot afford to carry that dust. I came to tell someone, you cannot afford to leave your peace. You've got to be prepared to move on. That's what I came to tell some. You cannot stay all your life nursing a wound because 
of some dust you carried from somewhere. You can't. There, you have a lot of people who are just waiting for the grace that is upon your life, for that anointing, for that gifting. They are waiting for your hands. But your hands are full. They are carrying dust. Go on, please. Verse 17. Be on your guard against the men. They will hand you over to the local councils and flog you in their synagogues. What does that mean? Some people will treat you nasty. Not everybody will treat you well. I'll say that again. Not everybody will treat you well. That's what Jesus told them. He told them, I'm sending you out there to go preach the gospel. I want you to heal the sick. I want you to cast out devils. And please don't be bogged down by people who will treat you nasty. The journey is long. The people in the queue who are waiting for you, the queue stretches from here all the way to Mount Sabe. I, I, I wish, I'm saying again, I wish somebody taught me ministry realities. I would not be cutting woods that I've been cutting for these many years. Nothing should stop you. Let's go on, please. On my account, you will be brought before governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. Go on. But when they arrest you, do not worry about what you are to say or how you were said at that time. You will be given what to say by the Holy Spirit. Please listen to this. For it is not... It will not be you speaking, but the Spirit of the Father speaking through you. Look at me carefully. When you are accused, the Holy Ghost will be there. To answer. To give you an answer. I wish somebody told me this. I would not be worried about accusations. I would be worried about what is the Holy Ghost wanting me to say. But many of us come around the accusation. Alisema, akanisema, akaongea na watu, akawaambia, akawaambia, akawaeleza. I would not come to them. I would be interested. Holy Ghost, tell me. What are we saying here? So that we move on. To Marize E, to E? Listen to this. Ministry realities enable you to have the right perspective in ministry. The right perspective. Number two, ministry realities help you to have a stand in your calling. You have a stand. You have a stand. You have a backbone. You have a backbone. I'll say that again. You have a backbone. Ministry realities. Please listen to this. Become a source of encouragement. When people treat you nasty. Oh, 
follow this. This is so vital. It's so important. Let's go on now. Brother will be betray brother to death and father to his, his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. Go on now. All men will hate you because of me, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. Two things. Two things. Number one, listen to this. Kill it, please. Before we kill it. If we kill it, it will never resurrect. If we kill it, you will resurrect it. If, you are, if your phone is on, kill it. Please, kill it back. Because if you don't do it, and if we speak a word here, it will be dead the rest of its life. This is a serious place. Very serious place. Listen to this. One of the hardest, I mean, one of the hardest things that the enemy uses to stamp for you is called betrayal. Write this in capital letters. Betrayal is a sign that you are moving places with God. That's why Jesus looked at you know Judas and told him, friend. What you are to do, go do it quickly. I'll say that again. There are two things that I know. If you have not met with them, you are not going anywhere in the ministry. Number one is betrayal. Number two is jealousy. And not many people are prepared for this. So when it comes... I mean, they are thrown off balance. They are unable to pray. The reason, listen, ministry, realities, help keep your relationship with God intact. I'll say that again. Ministry, realities, help. To keep your relationship with God intact. You are not thrown off balance. Listen to this. And you are not going to start accusing yourself. There must be something wrong with me. Excuse me. If there is something wrong with you, the Holy Ghost will tell you. Jesus wanted these people to see this is, this is normal. This is the world we live in. And all you do is to rise up and move on with your calling. He said on my own account, because of your relationship with me, because of what I'm doing in your life, because of what I'm doing through you, people will betray you. But listen to this. He tells them, don't, don't think that it is something that is out of the ordinary. Oh, no. We live in a crazy world. Psalm 58, verse 3 says, man starts to go astray right from when he is in the womb. 
it, it should not shock you. Oh, please help somebody. A bull is like, do you have a pen? Are you writing somewhere? Can I tell you what to write? Tell them to write this. You are not too special not to be betrayed. This is what nobody told me. And when I start, you know, when I quit my job, I looked at my papers. I looked at the, you know, the prospects of my career. And when the Lord called me, I burnt all my bridges behind me, and I thought I was too special. Hallelujah. Glory. Man of God. Man of the hour. I've obeyed God. I have paid the calling of God. I came to discover I was not too special not to be betrayed. And when I realized that, I said, I'm moving. Betrayal or no betrayal, I'm moving. I'm moving. I know in whom I have believed. And I'm fully persuaded that he is, he is able to keep that which I've entrusted unto him until that day. He said, on account of me, on account of what I'm doing in you, what I'm doing through you, you are going to be hated. Ask your neighbor. Muulize, tuki kuangalia hivi. Siku na kadasti ya mtu waliye kuchukia unabeba. Kadasti. Hata waleo, hiyo kadasti bado unabeba. That's the guy you must talk about. Listen to this. Jesus said, on account of what I'm doing in you and through you. People will hate you. Because they cannot compete with you enough. They will hate you. They will look at you and say, what are you doing in our church? Ulikuja kufanya nini? Is anybody hearing? Come on, let's go on. All men will hate you because of me, but he who stands firm to the end will be made whole. That's what it means. That word sake will be made whole. Now, listen to this. You are made whole when you stand against the Hatred against the jealousies, against the rejection. You are made, God continues to complete you. In every area of, our li of your lives. Because of your stars. And that's why. Jesus gave them these ministry realities so that they can stand and God continues to fill them. God continues to complete them. God continues to pack them. One man told me, an old man, told me, Interpret this to your neighbor who does not know Greek. He's an old man. By that time he was 79 years old.
Ukahuruwa na guko. Honiyo kauma na guko. Kwa ugo, no honiyo li, ukakoti bikete. Duwa rogu. That's somebody who is real. Sasa wewe, somebody says something nasty, and you are ready. You are, ata wakati unatoka kwa hiyo kanisa, umuambi pastor, umeacha uze wa kanisa. Umuambi umeacha udume ya watoto. You just go. Look at your neighbor. Muambi ya kuwa. Tumwere ya kure. Grow up. Grow up. Grow up. Go on place. When you are persecuted in one place, free to another, I tell you the truth, you will not finish going through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. Listen to this. Don't come around hatred. Don't come around rejection. Don't come around the scandal. There is another city waiting for you. There is another person waiting on you. There is another ministry. There is another there is there is another assignment. Don't come around the rejection. It will kill you. Look at your name, Mombia, or Rifan, your name. Nayeso, Nayeso, or Rifan, your name. Nifan, your name. Nikafan, your name. Nikatendewa. Wakatiwa kama unge niona. Excuse me. Can we to a hema hapo? I'll give you stuff you don't hear in the ministries. Because I'm borrowing from my experience. Not just from the Bible. I used to come there. And then I started, I, when you have come, let me tell you. Let me show you what I mean, how to know when you have come around a particular wrongdoing. Are you ready? Are you ready? Number one, your prayer starts to dry. Your prayer starts to dry up. Unakuta uombi, maana unafikiria tu. Juu ya vile ulifanya. Number two, condemnation. You start to condemn yourself, to find fault with yourself. I believe in a good God who will tell me when I've made a mistake. I believe God will even raise people to come and tell me, Thomas, I believe in a good criticism. The Bible says in every criticism there is a jam. Look for it, you will be a better person. I believe. I believe in correction. But listen to this. When you have come around a wrongdoing, number one, your prayer dries up. Number two, you are tempted to condemn yourself. To go around finding fault with yourself. And in verse 25 of that scripture, Matthew 10, Jesus is going to tell them, they did it to me. So don't think there is something wrong with you. They have done it to others. They have done it 
to me. Number three. When you have come to around the wrong doing, I'll tell you what happens. It paralyzes your potential. What you are doing in that church or in that ministry, what you are doing in that family, you stop doing it. Yeah. Now skip. Forget about it. When you have come to around there, let me shock you. It could easily lead to depression. Very easy. And the worst part of it your walk with God stops. Your walk with God. Vile ulikuwa nasikia Mungu. Vile ulikuwa na enjoy the Bible. Vile fellowship in Akupa. Your walk with God just stops. Friends, go on now. Are we in 23 or 24? Yes. Look at, look at Jesus telling them. Don't expect them to treat you better than they treated me. A student is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. Verse 25. It is not for a student to be like a teacher and the servant to be like his master. If the head of the house has been called Beelzeba, how much more? the members of his household. They did it to me. They even called me the prince of demons. When they call you a devil worshiper, you stop ministry. What are we talking about here? Sure, what are we talking about? And that's when you, many people started wondering, what have I done? What have I done? Jesus said, Look at me. I'm not stopping in my assignment. I'm not stopping in my calling. What God called me to do, I'm still going on. And I will finish it. What are you doing? What are you doing? If they called me Beelzebub, what do you think they will call you? So you can't camp around that. Oh no. Oh no. You rise up, throw, shake off that dust, and you move on. You cannot afford to stay offended all your life. You cannot afford to stay bitter all your life. Jesus has all the grace to help you move on. But it will require you to know this is life. When you look at your neighbor and tell them, welcome to planet Earth. Welcome to welcome to planet Earth. Where when the tough gets going, I mean, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. When the going gets tough, the tough, uh -uh, look at your neighbor and tell them, the going will become tough. Oh, yeah, it will become tough. Pastor Njeru, my friend, the one I was talking to you about, in Upper Mwingi. One time we are we are on a mission. 
in the same place. And he tell, he shows me a rock, huge rock. And he tells me, Thomas, Thomas, do you see that rock? We slept there with my friend. We slept up there. I told him, what do you mean? He told me, we came to this village. And by the, by the way, when we were in that village, that time, there was a blossoming church. But now, he tells me, when we came to preach here, they chased us off. And it was way in the evening, we had no place to go. So what did we do? We had our own implements, so we went and cut two poles, I mean, two, two, yes, two poles, and then we went into the bush, improvised and tied something to look to, to, to serve as a, a lung or a ladder to go up. And then we went all the way to that rock. Do you see that at the top there? Yeah, we, we went there. And when we went up, after we went up, we pulled our ladder. And uh, we put it there so that we can use it in the morning because all over here, everywhere here, there were huge snakes. That's why we had to sleep up there. I asked them, what did you do the following morning? They said all we did was to spend the whole day praying. And after we prayed the whole day, there is someone who saw us on that rock. And he invited us to his house. That's how we were able to start this church. And it was a nice, a nice church. What am I talking about? The going will get tough. You can't come around an offense all your life. You cannot afford to come around Alisem. You can't. You can't. The world is waiting for us. And I have news for you. Simuliona e COVID. Don't expect things to get better. We got to be, we got to toughen up. We got to be ready to move on despite whatever. We got to be ready. We got to be ready. Otherwise, we will find people that are wilting. Because everybody is carrying some dust. Everybody left their peace somewhere. What are we doing? What are we doing? Ati mse, kuna, kuna mutu flani hakuleta fungula kumi. And you have come to there. Ask your neighbor, yani, hema yako inakaa kwa fungu ya kula kumiri ya mutu, mutu fulani. Ayi. What are we doing? I wish somebody taught us that sometimes the going will get tough. There will be trials. There will be temptations. There will be sabotage. But listen to this. God told us, I will be with you until the end of age. I'll be there for you. I'll be there with you. Uh -uh. Stand up. Stand up, please. Yes, stand up. Stand up. Today, Sita kuhubiria iyo ya pokea, 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 pokea. Leo, I want you to toughen up. Is anybody hearing me? Come on, look at your neighbor and tell them toughen up. Ah, 
up. Tell somebody, toughen up. Hiyo ya pokea hiyo, utaipata pahala ingine. Not here. Here, listen to this. I want you to toughen up today. Is anybody here? Is anybody here? That way, you'll have the backbone, you'll have the muscles, and the gates of hell will never prevail against you. Did Jesus say, I'm building a church, and the gates of hell will never prevail against it? He did not say the gates of heaven. Don't assume everywhere you go, you will meet gates of heaven. That's why not many people, listen, not many people are doing spiritual warfare the way it should be done. Mana uko half half. We need people who can look at those devils and tell them. Wacha kuongea na mimi ukiwa mbali kuja hapa. Uko mbali, karibia hapa. Tuonane face to face like this. Eyeball to eyeball. Because I'm not here for the short haul. I'm here for the long haul. Don't tell me I'm in Kiambu for a, for a short time. Is anybody hearing me? Hello? Today you toughen up. Tell your neighbor toughen up. Ah, uh -uh. tell your neighbor toughen up. Tell your neighbor have the spiritual backbone. Have the spiritual muscles. Raise up your hand. Give us worship, we pray. E bwana u ninuwe Yes Lord Kwa imani nisimame ni pandemi lima yote 